Thank you, Lord, for your great mercy towards me. Thank you for humbling me, and thank you for growing me in greater trust in you. Jesus, what's on your heart this morning? Jesus, begin. You have done well to submit yourself in all things to my mother. She is faithful, and her intercession carries so much weight and fruit. Tell your cousin to do the same, and what she has been unable to do in prayer. With all her fasting and sacrifice, my mother can do in one word by saying, Son, if not now, when? And as an aside, he's just referring to my cousin, who's been going through a really difficult situation um, for a while. And she's very open now to the saints uh, and the intercession of the saints and even Blessed Mother. I gave her her first rosary last week um, and I encouraged her that I would help her to learn how to pray the rosary. And the saying Jesus mentioned, son, if not now, when, is referencing to the Chosen series, which is a TV series about his life and the life of the apostles. It was a scene during the wedding of Cana where they were out of wine and his mother came to inquire if he could help. And Jesus said it wasn't his time yet, just like in scripture. And her response was, if not now, when? She simply spoke to the servants then to do whatever Jesus told them. And sure enough, Jesus turned the water into wine. It's an amazing, it's amazing to know the influence his mother has because all throughout scripture, Jesus did nothing except what the father did. And he would often tell his disciples that it wasn't his time yet. Or when the Pharisees wanted to harm him, the scripture would say they couldn't do anything to him because it was not yet his time. Yet when his mother asked, although it wasn't his time, as he had said several times before, the father was moved and allowed Jesus to work a miracle before the appointed time, just because it was his mother who asked. John 2 verses 1 through 11, the story of the wedding of Cana. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it out. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now that had become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine, but you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee, and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Jesus continued, Her love, her humility, and her heart gets me to move just as I did for you before the appointed time. My mother speaks, and I work miracles on her behalf to bring her great honor and a share in my glory. Yet so many of my brides and believers do not understand. I have chosen you to tell them, beloved. Do not shy away from the opportunity to tell others about the power of my mother's intercession and her intervention in your life. And it's so true. I have been going through it, family, for the past week. Everything had been going good between me and this soul. However, I began to see several 555s and started making me very anxious. I began to have bad dreams of accusations and suspicions, which greatly heightened my anxiety. And the enemy pounced in with fear. Because I had received a warning from two different servants of God that a child was coming for us. We all know as heart dwellers, even leading up to Halloween, it's difficult. And this time after, and the time after, because the many curses release. So first started with little misunderstandings, then arguments that weren't being resolved, and rather left me rejected, abandoned, and not heard, which further magnified my old habits of worry and trust issues. The same time last year this happened, and it led to the most painful trial of my life, which lasted for seven months. I was paralyzed in fear, crippled actually, with hopelessness and despair, wondering if this is what they had warned us about, and if I wouldn't be able to endure through something like that again. It even took away my desire for prayer. The enemy reminded me what was the point. I did the same thing last year and all my fears still happened. I didn't know where to turn and last night I gave up the fight. As I got the rhema, do not worry, just lay it down, it's not your fight. I'm right on time. 
I was still seeing so many five five fives everywhere I turn. Even in songs about suffering, my readings were about the passion. It was all in my face at every turn. Then I began to resent even the Lord's warning of the trial I was in, and more to come because it caused greater fear and anxiety. So I prayed the rosary very sincerely for the first time in a while, in a place of total surrender and helplessness, saying whatever the Lord wills, that mother should give me grace to endure through it, have her long and help me through this. Then I said a simple request in my heart for the soul to do something very specific and to sincerely show an act of thoughtfulness, compassion, and care towards me by coming to spend time with me, which we hadn't really done in a while, without tension and pain. Right afterwards, as I just wiped my tears, the soul came, not only apologized, but did everything I had asked mother for in my heart. The soul's heart had changed towards me in the most tender way, and where I thought I was looking at an uphill battle of pain and tears for however long, ended just like that. Melted away like ice, like Jesus said, all the obstacles would. Wow. I was so amazed and remembered the power of intercession and how I had desired breakthrough, prayed for it, and I hadn't really gone to her for help or sincerely given it to her. And when I did, a miracle took place, for me anyway. I felt something finally broke. Jesus continued, She is the one who obtained the grace for you, for your deliverance from your enemies, and deliverance from the trial you are in. You did not lose any virtue of grace because your trial was shortened, but rather gained. Wow, Lord. When I saw the rainbow about being patient, strong, and courageous, I was tormented that this trial would be a long one, and last going on for months like last year. The fear gripped me, and I was paralyzed with sorrow and sadness and able to think clearly, and wondering if I would be able to endure such another trial. The cup intended for you would have been one of long suffering, giving you much time to grow in those virtues stated. But when you prayed the rosary yesterday in tears, she heard the cry of your heart, and your cry became hers, and her cry became mine, and the Father relented because of it. In a moment your prayer was answered. So you see the fruit and power of the rosary? That is not to say that every time your prayers will be responded in this way. There are times rather than the trial being shortened, you are given tremendous graces to not only endure, but to have a peace that passes understanding in the midst of it, and my joy that is supernatural, as you wait for your salvation. And that is also obtained for you by her through intercession. She always seeks to align herself with the will of the Father in all things. And she does because she's so one with him, too. However, she also, she also is a mother. And what mother would not be moved to pity and compassion when one of her children is suffering something beyond their capacity they feel they can no longer bear? Your sufferings become her sufferings. Your tears become her tears. And when you call on her through the rosary, she'll move on your behalf to give you a miracle. So thank her profusely, beloved. Thank you, Mother, so much for your tender care, your attention to every detail of my life, your concern in the movements of my heart that cause you to move on my behalf. Thank you, Mother. I always say I don't come to you as much as I should. Make me a better daughter. I give you everything and leave everything in your blessed, immaculate hands, for you can do wonders with the gravest of cases. Oh, Mother, thank you. I love you and honor you. Blessed Mother, a Mother of Mercy then began. I'm here, my dear little one. I'm here. And she was smiling. Be faithful to pray the rosary daily, my dear children. Very faithful. There's nothing that God will not do to come to the aid of the cry of his little ones. I'm here to assist and aid in this life and in the next. Be faithful to pray the rosary, little one, for your trip every day leading up to it. And when you are there, do not concern yourself with your beloved. His heart is changing beautifully. Only if you could see from heaven's perspective. In time, great light and truth will be shed abroad in his heart concerning my role to him and my role in the church. For now, it is safe again to share your love of me and the power of the rosary to others, that my son may be glorified, all that the more. And just a little testimony here. Um, if you guys have been following the channel, you remember in the beginning of our marriage, Father Derek was very adamant. And, uh, concerning our Blessed Mother's role and that was a source of contention for us to the point where Blessed Mother told me to lay down 
uh, the rosary and lay down uh, my passion, my love for her and speaking about her, even teaching about her, just to submit to my husband in obedience. So I had to do that. It was very painful. Um, but just recently, one of the heart dwellers, which I mentioned uh, in a previous message, will share her testimony um, on the channel soon. And she started her own uh, rosary ministry called the Friendship Rosaries. And they're beautiful. She sent me some from the U.S. And I just got it about three days ago. And they're beautiful. She even did one for Derek, Father Derek. And I was a little bit nervous to give it to him because I didn't know his response. And he loved it. He thought it was beautiful. And he even put it around his neck to wear it. He wears it every day faithfully now. He said just his jewelry. But I smirked. I'm like, ah, he has no idea. Blessed Mother is up to something. <laughs> so I just thought that was so cool. I was like, wow, you're right, Lord. You're right, uh, Blessed Mother. His heart is changing. <laughs> so back to what she was saying. My beloved ones, these are such grave times of testing, offering, and sacrifice. Yes, Jesus is asking for everything until the last drop. And you can give everything, I mean everything, to me. I will continue to make your filthy rags into precious piles of righteousness. Is there a trial, a struggle, a sin, an addiction or habit you have been struggling with for a long time? Give it to me. Trust me as you pray the rosary relinquishing all to me that I will handle it. Is there a situation that has been a long-standing circumstance of confusion, of pain, and you're not seeing any breakthrough? My beloved children, give that situation to me in the rosary, and I'll work a miracle for you. You have only but to surrender into my motherly hands, asking for my assistance, my intercession for God to move on your behalf, that stubborn mountain or that giant that stands in your way. And even if it's not the point in time for your salvation and deliverance, because I have prayed and present your request before the Father, He moves on your behalf, just as He did at the wedding of Cana. The favor given to me is not of my own doing, but the goodness of the Father to give me the ability to sustain all the graces given to me and to walk in greater humility, imitating my Son and completing entirely the work He had called me to do when I was on this earth. Because of that, I speak and He listens and His heart moves to come to the aid of the one I'm petitioning. So you see, beloved ones, many of you are in suffering and trials that have been weighing you down with much burden. Give it to me, your mother. Ask me for help and aid and breakthrough will come. Continue, my little one, with inspirations given to you. You must be more disciplined and faithful with your time. There's much to do and to accomplish before you leave, and much preparation that I'll be doing on your behalf as you pray for what the Lord desires to do in these nations, with the groups and people you will meet. Do not fear bringing my rosaries into China. Use wisdom and pray over them as well. I will ensure there will be no hiccups or issues. Trust me, beloved little one, as the many who have come before you have trusted in God to make them sometimes even invisible to their enemies. This is all preparing you for the greater trust in the Lord you must have when you are sent to danger territories or put in tense situations you will not fear sharing the gospel and will come up with creative ways to do it. You have God's protection, all of heaven and the angels with you and behind you. Do not fear and move forward with these things. And that was the end of the message. God bless you, family, to the next message. Please, please continue to pray for us. Pray for the trip to China and our mission trip to India as well. Thank you so much for your support and generosity towards this mission and this ministry. We love you guys.